this is a, a fact that very few people know. They were picked to finish ninth in the Big East this year. Wait, this is, this is the first time hearing about I this. I know, it's when, crazy. When did this happen? <laughs> it's, it's something that comes up in every every sentence. Yes, I ever banned said. myself from asking about that. <laughs> Shaka, Shaka, how do you feel about <laughs> being picked ninth? Um, okay, but we have to start there. Yeah. That's, that's the obvious place to start. They were picked to finish ninth <laughs> in the Big East. They just won it outright. This is not a mid-major conference. Certainly, there will be people who love the Big Ten that might, you know, quibble with that. But, like, this is a top-five conference, at, at minimum, a top-five, maybe top-four conference in the nation right now. So they went from a team that nobody really had a lot of belief in to being a team that, that wins this thing outright. When you, Just let's go back a few months mm -hmm. to the media day when it was revealed that there was a preseason poll having Marquette slated ninth. I mean, did that make sense to you? Did that feel – I'm sure it felt a little yeah. bit off, a little underappreciating, but, like – I don't know. I mean, they had they had a lot of guys back. I guess I, I'd be curious what your initial thoughts were when you when you heard that news. Yeah, I thought it was definitely low when people were asking me my opinion of where they would finish. I I would ju I just said fifth or sixth. That that was kind of like a default answer, you know, just because the same reason why people pick the coaches picked uh, Marquette to finish ninth. They just uh, had to replace their 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 two leading scorers from last season and Justin Lewis and Daryl Morcel. Um, Throughout last summer, you know, you'd, you'd ask Shaka, would ask Shaka Smart about that, and you know, he'd say, "Well, we're just we're going to do it by committee." Uh, you know, so Igadaro's going to score a little more, Tyler Kolo's going to score a little more, Stevie Mitchell's going to score a little more, Cam Jones is going to score a little more, and you know, at the time, I kind of thought that was kind of coach speaky, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, that, to his credit, that that was uh, proven accurate, and. Um, definitely didn't see the outright Big East champions uh, in the future, way back in October. But uh, I would have said back then that they would be vying for an NCAA tournament. What makes this engine run? You know, like in, in March Madness, it always comes down to stars making plays. Who's going to do that for Marquette? Who are, who are the guys that really, you know, that really make this engine turn over the way it has this year? Well, it starts with Tyler Kolick and Oso Iguodaro. I mean, they're two of the best passers in the nation and... That's what makes this Marquette team so hard to guard. Um, Oso Iguodaro being your center and being a great ball handler and being a, a passer and be able to facil facilitate out of pick and rolls, that's not, not something that teams see a lot defensively, and it's, it, it, it causes confusion for defensive teams. Um, Tyler Kolick, you know, is probably going to be, in a few days, going to be named Big East Player of the Year mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Um, certainly unique in that... You know, he averages 12 points a game. Uh, maybe by the time the regular season ends tomorrow, I mean, he might be third uh, on the team in scoring yeah. and could be your biggest player of the year, which is certainly unique. Uh, but if if you watch this team play, you see how important Tyler Kolick is, is to Marquette. All the ball movement, all the player movement, it all starts with him. And he's also they, – they take their leadership cues from him. He's, he's a fiery personality. Uh, as evidenced by, you know, <laughs> the quote uh, heard around the world uh, at, at Biggie's Media Day. Um, but I believe we can say F them. <laughs> I believe we can go, go that far. Yes. Uh, also, uh, as oft repeated as ninth in the Big East in the preseason. Yes. It's about the same. And he's, he's cashing in on that a little bit. You can get your <laughs> FM sweatshirts at, at TylerKolick.com uh, <laughs> if you want to get your Christmas shopping done in, in, in March this year. Uh, but really... One of the unique things about this team is that it's not reliant on one or two players. Like six people have, I think, have led the team in scoring uh, this season and, and during games. So, not reliant on one or two players that that could help you in March when when you know one guy gets cold or one guy gets in foul trouble. Well, it, it, how is Shaka special? I mean, he's a, he's a national coach of the year candidate. Do you think is it is it X's and O's? Is it is it just that emotional piece? I mean, he's had. He, he didn't have a ton of success at Texas, for, you know, by by their standards. Mm -hmm. He was a tournament yeah. guy, but, you know, str has struggled to get out of the first round of the tournament. And Texas probably, you know, would have moved on if things had stayed on the same trajectory mm -hmm. for the next couple of years. Yeah. So what 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 is the X, in, the X factor here that Shaka Smart provides that has allowed this thing to flourish? Uh, I think it, it's a number of things. I think when Marquette decided to move on from Steve Wojcicki a couple of years ago, they were definitely looking for a guy with head coaching experience. Uh, Wojo came in, you know, he'd been at Duke for a long time, um, but it's it's a whole different job moving that one seat over to the to the head coaching position. 
And especially if you're a first time head coach in a league like the Big East, the big high, you know, one of the top four conferences in the in the in the country, um, learning on the job is it's difficult because they're going against really good coaches every game. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, Shaka Smart's been a head coach since he was 31 years old, you know, and this is his 14th season as a head coach. He's been through it. He's been through the ups and downs. Um, and he's very super organized in uh, how he wants to develop relationships with people. I, I remember when he first came in and he was telling uh, telling me, like, how how he goes about his week. And he, he has everything, like, meticulously planned for, like, he meets with freshmen on, on this, you know, this so many times – a week during, you know, when they first get here, uh, just to make sure, our, you know, the commu- communication is open. Uh, he meets with, like, sophomores on this day, and, and um, he's just super organized in how he develops relationships and the communication. Um, and I think, you know, that you mentioned the the time he had at Texas. I think it kind of uh, spur, spurred, like, that that underdog mentality um, that he had when he was the when he was at VCU, and, you know, he – if you remember, he was the, like the hottest name in coaching after yeah. he made the Final Four, and they had a scrappy team, and he was, you know, this enthusiastic guy that took charges during practice as a coach and all that. Um, you know, at Texas, I think he lost a little bit of that edge. Where, you know, he's at this major athletic department that has the highest budget in the, you know, one of the highest budgets in the in the country, and you know, he's getting one and done NBA players, and he sure got back was. to Marquette, and uh, you know, this is a different different kind of program where he's developing guys over multiple years and he's really developed these really deep relationships with these guys. That's what he talks about all the time is that, you know, I'm going to start talking like Shaki here, but like player development is, is personal development. That's what he says all the time. Um, and you see it and these players have really bought in the last couple of years. And uh, you, I, th- I think it really plays out in how they play on the court, the way they share the ball, the way they move the ball, uh, they really play for each other, and it's 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 actually it's it's pretty amazing to watch. What do you think the odds here that Shaka wins National Coach of the Year? It does seem like Kolek will win Biggie's Player of the Year, Shaka will win Coach of the Year. I think that's kind of set in stone mm-hmm. at this point. Yes, for sure. What about National Coach of the Year? Could could Marquette really have a can? I mean, he's, they've got a candidate. Could they really have a National Coach of the Year winner uh, here in twenty twenty three? He's definitely in the conversation and. You know, I think we were talking about this before, but, you know, Bill Self's probably got to be up there. But, yeah. I mean, he might just be a guy that people take for granted a little bit. I agree. Uh, his success, just take it for just accept it as just uh, by default. He's he's going to be good every year. Um, other guys, you know, Matt Painter is probably up there. Mm. Jerome Tang at Kansas State was a hot name for a while. They've kind of cooled off. So Shaka's probably maybe overtaken him a little bit. Yeah. Um, but, Marquette's you know, probably going to finish ahead of K-State in the seating at this yeah, point. So. And Chaka's, you know, Chaka's got that ninth uh, ninth place narrative that, that we he mentioned does. earlier that, that Bill Self and Matt Painter don't have, although, you know, nobody was thought that Purdue was going to be this good either. Um, yeah. What Bill Self has is they won a national title and all those guys are gone. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, and they just won the big 12 again. <laughs> he's clearly the best coach in college basketball. Yeah. I mean, it was one of the best ever. So um, yeah, that's he's... not a surprise, but yeah, but this, this could be one of his masterpieces for sure. Yeah. I, I do think it'll be Bill Self. Um, I think Shaka is going to be way up there that night. It's not even just the, the, cause you could easily say, well, the medium people are stupid for picking them ninth. <laughs> like that's mm. just, that's the biggest part of the puzzle. You could say not you, of course, other media people, yeah. the generic media, you know how it is them. Yeah. them. them. Uh, but you could say he took a team with a lot of guys that are back. Like they didn't add anybody, yeah. you know, that's they, the thing. And they play super different than they did last season and super different than you'd expect a Shaka smart team to play. Like, you know, you'd think of Shaka and the havoc defense at VCU and, Garden guys, ninety four feet, but this is very much like an elite offensive team that's been, you know, top five in Ken Palm for the last couple months in offense. That that was another thing that 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 nobody saw coming. But it's a it's a credit to that coaching staff getting these guys and seeing the pieces that they have and fitting fitting them together perfectly. 